And here we are with another CRGA podcast, um, talking to stars of the past and people who made a huge contribution into CRGA, into CRGA and maybe live in other parts of the world. And today we have the legendary Grod Constein from Cratlow. How are you, Grod? Hello, Michael. How are you doing? Uh, greetings from Sydney, Australia. That's it. I was talking to Carl Walsh in a previous podcast, and he was talking about how everything's back to normal. You're working as much as you can, and you're both yeah. playing sport. It's totally different to what we're experiencing here in Ireland at the moment. Yes, and uh, I, I was I got a, a few moments with Carl last weekend when he was uh, in his new profession as a, as a referee, and um, things in Melbourne and Sydney and uh, on, in the other cities of Australia are... Um, are going very well based on, I guess, the lockdowns we've had, Michael. So, you know, the lockdown and the hard times that you're doing in Ireland now will will, will definitely benefit in, in the in the weeks and months to come. I suppose before I must mention, I suppose, I suppose the shock news to most people in the current, in the world was that Jack Chapton was elected Clare County Board Chairman. Did you ever think it was in Jack? Oh, Jack, well deserved. Um, I sent him a text message. Um, before and after uh, his election and very well deserved. Jack has been there for many, many years, just like many other people within GA clubs, but he's, he's been given his turn now and I wish him and uh, all in Clare GA the best of luck, uh, which looks like a bright future ahead for everyone. I suppose a lot of work has to be done, but hopefully things will, things will get better and we, we, as you say, a brighter future. Anyway, look, I suppose we t- we're here to talk about yourself today and I suppose Tell us first about your, I suppose, your life in Cratlow growing up and we say who were your key inspirations, I suppose, before you get into national school and underage with Cratlow. Yeah, yeah I, I guess starting with the family is, is quite important, Michael, because, um, you know, your, your your roots and where you came from are, are hugely important. And Cratlow, as I said uh, to you before, you know, there was a big influx of people in the, in the 1970s and 80s and I guess the, the, the fruits of that were seen uh, in the last, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. So I come from, uh, my family come from Kilmetal. Um, my dad are the Considines and uh, my mother is, is Murphy. Um, her brothers obviously played for, for Clare in the 70s and, uh, and Munster. So Sean, Teddy and Martin. So a great influence on me. Uh, my cousin Barry was an All-Ireland medalist uh, in 97 as well. And played for many years other than that. Uh, after that, my brother Damon played with the likes of Sean Do- or Liam Doyle and Sean um, in the junior 1993. So he was a big influence as well. Um, and, you know, my mother was a treasurer for Cracklow GAA for 20 years. So I was, uh, our house was uh, um, very busy around the times of, of, of the, 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 the good times in, in Clare, and there was many many cups of tea and, and Jack Chaplin was down there many, many nights as well. Um, so I would have grown up, Michael, in that household and with that, with that. Um, I suppose it, it, was, it was actually amazing how many people from Kilmehill settled in, um, in Cratlow Parish. It was like, like little Soho or little Kilmehill in yeah, Cratlow. That, you're back probably as well. Yeah. 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 How do you think that they all came together? Was it just, who was the first Kilmehill person to move to Cratlow and where did it all start? Oh, that's a great question, Michael. I guess if you if you were to describe Cracklow um, to people that were, were coming in there, it was kind of like a dormitory town. So you had Shannon, you had Ennis and Limerick, uh, Shannon Airport, obviously there. You had the likes of, of um, Carl McGrath's uh, father, Joe, who was a teacher in Limerick as well. So, and there was people that working in factories in Shannon and working in Limerick. So Cracklow was the was the country uh, dormitory town that they, they settled in, obviously, and everyone knows how beautiful Cracklow is in relation to the to the woods and and uh, and uh, on the on the Shannon Estuary. So that's that was the draw, I guess. It was Shannon or Cracklow or, or Limerick, uh, and and a lot of good people, especially in Clare. I guess they didn't. It was it was either Caradavon and their their kids would play for Limerick or Cracklow, and they, they might get a chance of playing for Clare. You know. All the six hundred bridge people are so upset that you <laughs> that none of you went up to them. You all stayed down just that little mile or two short well, to the bridge. It, uh, it generated quite a, a rivalry in I think ninety four, and, and they played in the semi final against them. Um, I think Damon was in honeymoon. He came back for that with, 
they beat as well in a in a, in a, in a I think an intermediate final or semi final, and then obviously the, the the battles we were having with them in the last couple of years. It, it brought both clubs on and off that the rivalry. I suppose you'd, there'd be a lot of rivalry in Clare hurling, but the Bridge Cratter rivalry would be a particularly strong rivalry in that in that part of the community. Exactly, Michael, and uh, um, some great games and, and, and to beat them as well, and, and for them to, to to have you know really uh, competitive games is, is is great for such a small parish. Yeah. And um, who who else would be um, when you were. Growing up, who were the key, the, the people that motivated you to play hurling and football for yourself, and the kids that yeah, you? Think, yeah, I would have. My my start in, in life was, would have been quite different because we we lived in Carradavon, um in Limerick up until I was born in the nineteen eighties. Uh, so I was born in nineteen eighty, but Damien, my brother, and my sister Farona were born in in, in Limerick in Carradavon, so they lived in there. So when I moved to Crato uh, when I was born. We kept Caradav and Christ the King as the primary school, so I never went to primary school in in Cracklow. I went to Limerick. So, you know, my mum, I have to say, was a huge influence because she drove us to all the all the games. And um, my dad was kind of a, a quiet man, a calming voice, and gave advice only when needed, when I needed to be put in line. Um, but uh, I, I never wanted for anything because uh, you know my mum and dad gave me. Gave me everything really, and Damien would have went to Christ the King as well. So, again, Damien was was a big um, influence on me, just because he, he was playing with Claire as I was a, a young, just ten years between us, you know. Um, and one memory I guess is, is making my senior debut for, for Cracklow, and Damien was full forward, and, and we didn't play um, very long after that. But it was great to be able to play with your brother, which is fantastic. So, in in primary school, people that really influenced me, you know. I don't know if you you probably know the, the likes of Bill Reedy. Bill was a would have been a, a quite quite well known in the Limerick circles. Uh, he was in um, he would have been heavily involved in JFK just there yeah. on the Ennis Road across from the tennis tennis courts. Uh, Lee McGorman, um, Mr. Dillon, Pat Milan, uh, Catalan were all big uh, hurling people. And I have to stress that um, Cara Davin School. Was at a very high level in, in national school and yes. standard, and we won quite a bit. Now, if you look at look in the peer sheet now, um, a lot of them would have come from Christ the King, uh, and um, and uh, we call it JFK. We call it Jail for Kids. They were our rivals. Um, um. So, coming from primary school and and then going up to an age ten or twelve, then I would have started playing hurling for Cracklow um, because they didn't really have a a really underage team. So, you know, Jack Ladan, for example, would have been um, very influential uh, under 12s, 14s, minor and, and under 21. So we would have been in the C grade and Jack brought us up in a, in a you know, we did a Dublin minor and, and 21 success and even played against um, Crusheen many times, didn't we? Yes, um, you, you, I remember. Uh, the played, Mike, wasn't it? In 1996 minor C, we're four points each in the drawing game at yeah. our castle. And we and thought we were going, we were talk, did, and then in, in the replay and Tully, you, you saw, we, well, we did our best to sort of fix, sort you out, but unfortunately, you were too, no. at that stage, you were too fast, wasn't he? You gave us a. Grode the Donald was playing that time. I remember Grode was a great Grode player as well. Playing, yes, and Cahill Dillon, a lot of those. Oh, and, yeah. and ironically, even though it was only, he, he gave us a, I think it was, he beat us something like 17, 18 points in the replay in Tulla. But ironically, an awful lot of both sides, even though it was only minus C, went on to win senior championship medals. So and we got to know each other very well, Michael. Yeah. Christine and Macklow have a great relationship and a great respect, I must say. Um, so Jack Ladan was, was a great underage trainer of ours. Um, once we went from the B to the C, um, you know, the likes of Joe McGrath, Mike Deegan, Jody O'Connor, great influences. Um, and then when I, I think I came back after 10 years, Alan Neville, Brian Lohan, all these types of people were in the club at that time. They had, they, Alan had married a, um, a very famous um, family into the, into the Rhines. Um, and Brian obviously has a house there now and he's, he's doing some great stuff. So their influences, I guess, up to a, a certain level um, in club. You know, my Flannan's days were, 
probably the greatest influence on me. Um, I always longed to go to Flannan's. And uh, you had Michael McInerney, John Minogue. Um, you know, they gave us Dean Ryan and Heart to Success, which wasn't common back then because there was a six-year gap uh, in relation was to it, Heart to Was success. it 1998 you won the Heart to, was it? 98, but they hadn't won it since 91. That, and, and that was a famine in Flannan's terms. Yeah, you know, you had the Gantleys going through at that time. Brendan. And some great herders, the John Reddens. They all had missed out. Um, and, you know, you know, you had the likes of Con Woods, Tommy Curtin. Father Maloney was, was a great influence and even Father Tracy kept us all in line, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know Father Tracy, lovely, lovely man. It is. He was the guy that kept us in line when we were jumping around the boring school and uh, causing trouble at night. And, and fans were very unlucky at that time. There was great football teams in fans and yeah. you were just unlucky not to win a corner world. Yeah. I think they won at 95 with Tommy. They won, at, they won in 95 and 93, but your generation were just didn't come to, yeah. they just fell a bit short. Do you know, we, we were beaten in the semi-final by Fionn Murray scored a winning point at the end. 3-3. Yeah. Do you remember Fionn Fion Murray? Yes. He went on to play with Cork. And I suppose um, you had great success with that. When did you start getting on, I suppose, with the, the Clare setup? Yes, we did, yeah. did you, you did the usual Tony Forrest to Nina Co-op route? Correct, correct. I think, you know, I, I was kind of a late starter in relation to, to Clare. I was probably on the on the subs bench in the Tony Forrest still was kind of still growing and finding my feet. But um, that was when I was, you know, 13, 14. And that's when I had come into Flannan's. Um, and Flannan's brought me on leaps and bounds, I must say. Um, 14s, I wouldn't have made much of an impression. It was, it was when... Remember the East Clare, North Clare, North East Clare, South Clare. Yeah, that was a great tournament, and uh, yeah. you, could, you could really gauge how far you are or how far you have it to work. Yeah, work great. So um, that was a, we were East Clare, and, and um, you know I think Davy Davy was always yeah, Davy Fitz was always involved constantly. So Davy was a great mentor as well that time, and um, he was just they were they were coming to winning. Or sorry, they were getting beaten by Limerick and, and Tipperary that time, and they they, they never gave up the, the 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 task of 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 inspiring us. So, Davy would have, I guess, sixteens. He would have focused more on Clare going into the minor. So then the likes of um, Kevin Kennedy, Colm Hone, and Louis Mulqueen, Sean O'Halloran, Tom Hogan. These were very influential from when I was sixteen up into the minor and brought us into under twenty one. And we all know the famous Munster final. In 1999, where Davy and uh, and that management team took us right to the monster final, and to be honest with you, to this day, that was that was the most tense game. It was like a coliseum, if you remember. Yes, yeah, so that was you know, 18, 19,000 yeah. people. It was it was yeah. you you wouldn't you don't throw out the word war zone, but it was as close as you could have to it in a GA setting. Exactly, and uh, it even made the news that night for for other reasons. But it was a it was a great game, and you know. We had minor All Ireland played, and we had, you know, we had we played played minor the year after. But in that short period of time, from from sixteen up until twenty one, there was some serious games played, mm. uh, and, and you played with some serious uh, underage hurlers. But we also we were looking at Clare winning and beating the Tips and the Corks and going to win final. So you know, from ninety um, seven, you know, from seventeen from seventeen years of age up until when I finished at 23 some serious amount of games played and it was um, yes we went through a, a huge amount of talent if that makes sense yeah and what was it like we say that the dollar Ireland minor semi-final in 97 and the final in 97 when the seniors were i suppose if it had been an ordinary year you might have been the the, the main act yes yes and, but thankfully it was a double act that year what was it like to be involved when everything Everything clear touched that year. The only, the only game of note that Clare lost in mind was the would have been the, the minor final down in yeah. Cork that year. It was a game you sh- you should could have won, I suppose, in ways. Yeah. What was it like the semi final final? What expo- what did you what was the, the, the build up like to it? I guess um we as a as a as a team in the minors, you know, we had been together from sixteens up until um up until that time and uh, we were very, very well prepared. You know, we were playing uh, challenge games against Kilkenny's, Galway's, week in, week out. So it was probably, of all the teams I've ever played on, we were the best prepared in relation to um, no, no, no stone unturned. 
the county board were, were fantastic in, in relation to providing us with everything. Um, they did see, you know, you, you always try to back a winning horse and they did see a lot of, uh, of, of talent in us. So we were playing the likes of Go and, and Kilkenny and beating them in challenge games. So there was that confidence that we could do it. The, the, the Tipperary game, you know, we hit the bar. We, we, we were ahead by three or four points. They came back, the likes of Owen Kelly, Shelley come on, got goals right at the end. So yeah. we knew we yeah. weren't far off the pace. Um, I remember being in Kilkee on holidays and watching Tipperary play Galway and Galway beating them at the last. And we were saying, geez, we're, we're now playing Galway in the final. We have a huge opportunity. We did, we did really want to play Tip in the final to get the revenge, but um, it worked out really well for us. Um, but going back to that point, after every match, semi-final and final, we would sit on the top uh, Hogan, uh, if you remember, they were like the best yes. seats, the great yeah. seats at that time. Because if you were in the lower, you could be way back at the at the back of the seat. I see, so, see, no, see nothing. Yeah. You know, we we had won the minor. So I actually think we spurred on the seniors a lot as well because oh geez, the minors are winning. Wow, that's that's a great boost. And and, and they'll, I'm sure that'd be a question for for anyone that you bring on um, uh, on the on the on the panel. But we would sit down at knowing that we'd beaten Kilkenny, the likes of Henry Sheffin was playing that day. Um, and, and a few others, um, you know, really relaxed watching the seniors play, uh, the DJs when they played Kilkenny in the semi, and, and then winning it and knowing that you've got a final to look forward to. You know, it was just a great build up, and the seniors were great because we used to train after them or before them, and we'd have a chat with them, and uh, you know, the likes of. Oh, you know, who, would, who would the the, the leaders in your squad, or maybe maybe a better way to put it, who were the rogues in your squad, the lads? Of- yeah, Maybe, we know. Sometimes when things are going serious, they might just, you know, when 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 Kevin might be getting cranky or Colin was roaring at you or something like that, yeah. or Louis was roaring at you. Sorry, but was there anyone who was the lads that would bring it down a bit and just chill a bit, lads? Yeah, sure. Listen, we all know that there were some great characters on that team, um, but there was there was massive respect for for everyone. Um, yeah. We were a very balanced team, Michael. There was no real superstars other than you know we had we had John. And we had Bino, we had, we had Flash out on the wing. We had a great backline, really good backline. We had Mark Lennon in the corner that if we ever got fouled, and I was a bit of a diver myself, you know, I used to, I used to get quite a number of frees. Um, you must follow Liverpool, do you? <laughs> I'm an Aston Villa supporter, so <laughs> I don't know where I go with that. But if we ever got fouled around the midfield, you know, Mark would come out uh, from the corner and, and, and slot it over. We weren't the most flamboyant. But by God, you know the the McMahon's in there, yeah, and um, and the forward line and Conor Early's, you, their backs would never get an easy ball out, and yes. uh, we many many frees. So, you know, John was you know had John Redden had massive respect from all of us. Um, Flash, uh, Kenny Kendi, full back. Um, they all were big men. Uh, whereas around them there was a, it's a bit smaller. So they uh, our, our spine was very strong, and uh, obviously Conor Early could could catch ball from the sky as well. So we had a very strong, and Stefan Fitzpatrick from the Sycamore Bridge was a, was a big man. And I was, I was, I was uh, sweeping up balls around him. So we were, we complimented each other very well, Michael. And, and he even took Conor early down to Cratlow and put him in charge of the hurling team. He, he yeah. saw his potential at a young age. <laughs> I, I suppose in, when you moved into, from the minor and then the 21 was, Sort of, um, that was finished. What was it like to adjust to senior? Was it a totally different ball game or, do you know the way that the officers yeah. say a great minor might make a senior, but you you progress that level. What was the difference? So I played. I, I well, I think Jarek Nan and, and his backroom team were the difference, really, because they don't call you in. You know, they wouldn't just call you in for for the sake of it. They had confidence in you. Um, yeah. So I remember he called me in, and we we played. You know, I made my debut against Antrim in, in the league, and we all know what, what it's like to play against Antrim. It's, it's no easy task. Yes. So I remember getting the confidence of playing maybe a a lower tier team, making my debut there, and just getting me settled in. But I was training for a year before that with them in and out because I went, I, I left Flannings after the Hearty in '98, and, and and went to tutorial to, to to get myself into college because I'm I was much more focused on the on the hurling. Um, and I guess in the, in the recent article, um, education is so important. Um, you have to have yourself covered because uh, sport can be quite 
um, short, in a short career. So um, I went to tutorial in 99, so I missed out on another hearty, but that's, a, that's for another story. Um, yeah. But I went in there and Sean Stack, Sean Stack was training as Sean used to collect me on a Saturday morning when I was supposed to be studying and he'd bring me to UL and we'd train. So I was constantly taking over. So it wasn't just a, uh, a quick... Mr. Con- did Mr. Constantine know that? Yeah. Uh, well, Tony, Tony, well, well, going on to Tony Constantine as well. Tony was, was very influential to get me in as well. Um, but Sean was, 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 was good to me, for collecting me. I used to have to walk around the corner of, uh, in, in the Collins Street in Limerick and get into Sean's car and, and I'd go to training on a Saturday. I should have been in study. But um, I was nicely weaned in to the Clare setup. It just answer your question. Yeah. And how many years did you play with Terry? I know, did injuries such as curtail you a bit or did life yeah, take so, over it? Yeah, so ni- 99, I would have started playing. So back then it was called, it was like that um, that league, you know, like the Connick League in football. What was that called? Where you play Galway and it's a leash and all those. Um, SPD and league, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I was marking, I was playing and playing against them, um, you know, um, uh, against Galway in, in league games, they're like it's like the Waterford Crystal equivalent now. Um, yes. I was getting blooded in and, and uh, taking my belts and learning um, from 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 those games. So '99, you know, I remember Jerry Quinn came in as well, and Jerry made the panel against against Galway in the replay. But I was training with these guys in '99 on the training panel, and then heading back to to college or to school or or, or to college, but. Um, 99, 2000, 2001, 2 and 3. The first year in college in, in LIT, I did my cruciate in Fitzgibbon, Fitzgibbon game. So that ruled me out of even under 21s uh, with Claire. So I missed the under 21 year. And ironically, Limerick beat us in the first round and they went on to win two or three in a row, if you remember. They did, yeah. Mark Keane was over them, yeah. Mark Keane, yeah. So that was a huge disappointment. But it was a cruise. It was a, it was a, you know, it's just given hurling is like wet, wet, um, and uh, you can be a marked man in games as well. So mm. I did it very, very early. I think it was 19 when I did my first cruise yet. Um, and then the year after, I did another cruise yet. Uh, David Fitz was over us. Uh, we were playing DIT, did my cruise yet again, and uh, out for another year. And then I went to well, I went to WIT on this. So got back obviously very, very well on the first and second one. And then went to WIT on a sports scholarship for a year um, and, and lived with the likes of, of um, Henry Shefflin, mm-hmm. Andy Maloney, Hopper McGrath, um, Willie Maher, uh, Damien Joyce, um, Michael Jacob and JJ Delaney. So I was getting myself back in, getting myself back into a really good environment um, on and on the back of a very good Fitzgibbon campaign. Sir Lyons called me in um, in 2000. And if you remember... We beat Limerick in, in Limerick. We beat Kilkenny. And then we were beaten by Tipperary in the National League final in 2000. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I started the final. And guess who was on me? And I'll never forget this, Michael. We were doing our warm-up at the start of the game. And then all of a sudden, wing-back John Lahey. Handy, <laughs> so, handy challenge for you. Yeah, so uh, I came out second best, Michael, on, on that day, uh, I must say. But uh, that was a real nerve, nerve wracking and uh, a real um, introduction to County Hurling. What was the biggest game or your best performance that you think you ever played in a Clare jersey? Um, in all codes? In well, all yes, all codes. whatever you feel comfortable, you know. Yeah. It, might not, really? it might not have been an all Ireland final, it might just have been a game, a yeah. league game or a, a Munster Champs game. Something you felt you, you, everything went right for you. Yeah, so definitely in 1997 against Kilkenny in, in the in the semi final, I got three points from midfield, um, and there were I guess there were three crucial points, and we won by three. But just it was a steady game all day, um, just mm-hmm. popping them over. But at crucial times, that was a, that was a great, that was very fulfilling. Um, and I loved, uh, I, uh, we spoke about, it, I loved the 99 under 21 final. Um, uh, it was just like the two Kellys were playing. Um, Willie Maher was playing. I was marking um, uh, my brother-in-law's brother now, uh, Flannery. So um, who else was playing? Um, there were some really hit, big hitters. Uh, 
Declan Brown got the, one of the winning goals. Um, yes. It was just a star-studded game. The atmosphere, we, we missed out, but very narrowly. And then whatever happened afterwards, it was just a very, very memorable game. And uh, I gave a good account of myself at midfield as well, which I was happy with. So there are two ones that stand out. Um, you know, minor games, we, you know, the next year we play, I was captain of the minors in 98. Um, and we had a great team. We beat, we beat Limerick and Tipperary to the final. Cork beat us. And then we lost by a point at Galway in the set in the in the, the quarter so Yeah, that was a re- great run. The, then the 21s, when I captained the 21s, we were knocked out in the first round. So I guess, yeah, those two games were, were quite memorable. And when was your last game for Clare before we move on to club? Yeah, so I played against Galway in 2003 in Ennis in the qualifiers, and we lost by a point. Um, and that was my last game for Clare. I went off and, and went and pursued my my degree in, in Dundee University after that. And where did you how I suppose before we talk about how have you ended up in Australia now? Was it just a was did work bring you there or was it just the adventure? Yeah, I get like I guess I left Ireland in two thousand and three and um, when I graduated in two thousand five I went to Dubai to work um, for five years and I went to Hong Kong for two and a half back to London for one year. And then obviously that brings us back to, to, to playing with Claire or playing with Cracklow again in 2013 and 14. But Australia was always on my, on my radar. Um, and while I was home in Ireland, I had applied for a visa and I, the visa came through just uh, in 2014 after we, after we doing the double. So I, I take advantage of that and, and um, it's going well so far. Was it? I sp- ha, ha, you you said you were away when Cratlow, um won the hurling title in 29, mm-hmm. 2009. They mm-hmm. they lost the final to Christian in ten. Was it a was it a bit of a how how, was, how did you feel watching? Did you get to see the game live or did you yeah, watch it? Yeah. What was it like to be watching the game and not out there saying, "Geez, I could be there." That never entered my head. Um, it was just. Absolute, um, uh, I guess, absolute um, congrats to the boys and uh, just delight for them. You could, you, if you, yeah, you can't go and, and say you regret something because you're, you've taken a decision in your life to, to yes. go work uh, and to experience the Middle East. You know, I was just many, uh, how, how many of your, we say, ex- direct compatriots were playing in 2009, that first county final win? Yeah, quite a few, quite a few. The Barry Duggins, the, the John O'Gormans, um, the Browns were there. So I would have left when we were B. So I remember our, our battles against Ballier and, and Tony Griffin. We used yes. to be battling with them in the B competition a, a couple of years before that. And, and obviously Sean Hawes was, 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 a, was a goalie as well in, 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 in those B teams and, and, and A teams, we call them now. But So I would have left when we were beaten in the B finals and I think they won the B final a, a year or two after I left as well. So we, we were we were senior B that time and, and uh yes. when they won the senior A and uh, I remember Patrick Chaplin's goal it was uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. And I what, and then what was it like to get a, to come back then for the, the, the what did you win with Kratlow though when you when you came back for 2013-14? Were you there for two years or one year? Yeah so I used to come back I used to come back and forth to London uh, from London to 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 um to play football, I think we won an intermediate title as well. Um, during that year when I came back in football, um, and Martin is my is my uncle and he, he's hugely involved in in, in the football and uh, he's uh, he managed many teams. So I think we won an intermediate. But but when I decided to come back, and I remember coming back just for Clare Cup games because in my employment contract they used to fly me home because I used to do a ten a ten and three. Um, I worked in the in the metros we were tunneling and I remember coming home and I remember my I remember Joe McGrath calling me I don't I don't the Dillons won't be happy with me now or uh, Corona won't be too happy with me but right. I remember playing against Crusheen my first league game right and I, I, I was doing no training in London and, and uh, Joe always had huge belief in me anyway and he'd always should talk out meet the lads I'd say he always thought that because I wasn't in Dubai anymore and I was closer to London that, uh, that he might he might draw me home so he put me uh, put me on the bench 
against Corsheen in the league game, Clare Cup, and Podge Collins got, got, a, got a belt and he, he went off injured. And I came in, I came in on Corona and I got two off, two one off him in, in the game. So my confidence was like, whoa, do you, you know, I must have, there must be something left in me. And uh, I went back to London, came over a few times and went, you know what? Um, I'm sure there's a course in, 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 in UL I can do and uh, take a year off and uh, come back because I could see the boys were, were, were flying it. Um, yeah. I took a chance, but I, I really wanted to come back and reconnect with family as well, Michael, because I'd been away for, for 11 to 12 years at that stage. So it was a good excuse. Yes. And I suppose, um, was there any key, was there any game you played in that you've probably, I mean, I'm not sure if I asked this question, that you might have had a regret that you didn't win? Was it the Munster Minor final or was there anything else? It's a great, well, 99 would have been great. Um, I think the Munster Club final, when, when we, we went the extra time, um, it would have been would have been fantastic to win the Munster Club final in, in, in 14. Um, you know, we obviously lost an All Ireland final to Kilkenny, but in essence, you know, they were they were a much better team than us on the day um, and got the breaks. But bitterly disappointed in 98 as well as a minor captain. We got beaten well by Cork and we had beaten Limerick and Tipperary, and we were very confident of going into that Cork game. That was the same day. That did on oh no, water for playing that day. I think, yeah, it was just um, that was a very oh, good before the team. famous night year drawing game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and actually, who was um, who was playing that day? I think, you know, it that was that was a day I would have loved. Um, and I remember, you know, rehearsing the the captain speech and learning a bit of uh, gay uh, my. my uh, Irish or Gaelic uh, speech and just been really looking forward to that day because we had such a good team and we just didn't turn up so that was a real disappointment as well um, now we went on to be beaten by a good Galway team in the, in the, in the quarter final but we got to play in Crow Park together um, and they were the likes of Tony Carmody, um, Tony Griffin Jerry Quinn, Sean Hawes um, yes. a really good team as well I suppose you could say in a way that White Clare won the Ireland 97 the senior and super super players came after them. Clare sort of maybe missed out, maybe another All Ireland. I know there was a ninety two or the two thousand two final. But do you think Clare maybe lost a chance to win one more All Ireland? Well, I made my debut in two thousand one, and I came on, and we were beaten by a point. If you remember, down in yeah. the first I missed a point to actually draw for myself when I came on. But I felt that team like that, that day. If you ever look back at the game. You know, Tipperary weren't any great shakes on that day. Now they went on to, to play very well in the preceding games, but God, we we had the nucleus there of a of a, of a fantastic team to to go on, and they and they went on and played Galway in the final. And you know, I just felt that that was a that would have been like you had um, David Ford and Noel Gilligan and 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 uh, Markham doing really well that day. You know, in two thousand and two. You know, they weren't scoring as much as as they as as we we we, we could have in, in the final anyway for sure. But um, yeah, two thousand one. I think if if we hadn't lost to Tipperary, it could have been a good year for us. Yeah, and what what are you doing now currently in Australia? What what would your what's your occupation now? What are you working at? Yeah, so I'm obviously by trade I'm a civil engineer, Michael, and uh, I've now got a um a recruitment business here, um supplying engineers to all the big projects. Very good. So there's a lot of metros going on here, uh, a lot of mining, and um, I'm doing putting engineers into key roles, so uh, construction managers, engineers, commercial managers uh, that are running these projects. So I've got an agency here called Brightside Consultants, and I'm placing some some Irish people that are, are Irish professionals that are looking to go home to Ireland. Okay. Um, setting them up with Irish employers. So. There's a big, there's a lack of good engineers and, and uh, construction professionals, and quite a lot, quite a number of Irish people are looking to come home when they can um, post COVID. And um, have you came across? I know you're 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 at, you're, you're keeping your GA links together by being involved down in in Australia. Have you have you come across any Clare people or people from Galway or Limerick that we might know of that would be playing or working in your locality? Oh, listen, there's there's there is a lot of. Um, 
the, 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 the GA in Melbourne is, is huge. Um, you have Clare, Cork, Galway, Wexford are, are, are a big uh, component of it, but there's, there's too many to mention, but we have obviously Carl, Carl Walsh is, yeah. is a part of, um, of a club down there. I sponsor Gary Owen, GAA as well down there, the girls team in the Camogie, and it's great for me to, to embed myself in the Irish community in Melbourne, even though I'm based in Sydney, um, I travel there a lot. So um, there's, there's, there's a, a great uh, contingent of, of, of counties. Do you, do you keep in contact with home now? Obviously with uh, so the social media and Facebook now, you probably know yeah. what's happening. Is anyone, even those living in Cratla? Yeah, well, Jerry Quinn's living in Cracklow now, so I keep in contact with, with Jerry and, and, and Niall Gilligan and John. John Redden's returned um, to to Ireland, um, and Jerry Connell obviously is is looking after the Clare ladies, so I keep in touch with those guys. Um, but the Cracklow lads, you know, they, they've they've been unlucky in a couple of finals now, so hoping hoping they'll they'll do well in the, in, the, in the coming years again. Does it? Does it? I suppose I suppose you could say with Cracklow that. People might say that the, that generation, like every other club, it gets a great a golden generation, maybe slowing down a bit, but there's no signs of it at the moment anyway. And, and there's a couple of young players coming through. Even Brian Lohan is a young fella that's as good as anything. That's, they have a brilliant under yeah. 13 or 14 team. So there's probably more coming through than even with this generation maybe hitting the 30 plus now. Yeah, and, and hopefully there, there may not be a, a huge lag in, in the new generation and, and the, the existing yeah. uh, doing something in that. Look, location wise we're, we're pretty lucky and do you do any coaching or um, what, what, I suppose maybe I could ask you, what, what's the GA like, what's the difference between the GA in Australia and in Ireland is there differences or the similarities well I guess of course there's similarities you know, the GA globally um, has, you know, has the same ethos um, has the same values um, I guess there's more people here. You know, in, in one city you'd have 500 GA players. Um, I must say the loyalty is huge to, to different clubs in um, in um, in Australia because they have the women's teams, the men's teams, both hurling and football. So they're all very much they train together on the same oval and they 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 socialize together. Um, so. Probably more, probably closer together. They're very much closer together. Uh, and is it? I suppose the social aspect is massive for people. The, uh, whatever about the rivalry, once the game is over, they gather together for a drink or a barbecue. Is that is that a, a key component? Yeah, like you know, you can't underestimate how far Australia is um, and how lonely it can be if you don't have an Irish, the Irish connection. Some people yes. that do come out here. You know, oh, listen, I'm going to do my own thing and experience the, 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 the country and they can they do that. But they always seem to come back to the, their Irish roots and, and want to get involved because, it, you know, Australia is, is, is quite multicultural. Um, so you, you can have both your GA life and uh, your Australian adventure life as well. So it's um, I must say, like in at every club in Ireland, there's some great people over here as well. Yes. And even Carl Hodge taking up refereeing. That's that's a that shows you. <laughs> we might bring you back. We might bring you back to Clare to referee the football final in a couple of years' time if you if you pass the fitness tests. There you um, go. Yeah, I suppose ju- just to conclude, is there is there anything you'd like to say back to the people in, in Crats or in Clare? Do you know what what you feel? Do you think you'll ever come back? Is that a, is that a very personal question or? No, that, that's that's. Um, I'm, you know, I'm making plans, Michael, um, with, with the business I have here and, and, and the business that I'm setting up in Ireland with, with, a, with a few key key um, colleagues of mine that I worked with in the Middle East, um, New Future Careers, we're, we're, we're calling it. And we already have one or two clients in Ireland. So I'd like to be able to spend, you know, my summer months in Ireland or, or even longer um, and have that transition from Ireland to the Middle East to um, Australia and vice versa. So... The plans are in place, Michael, for sure. I'm only, I'm only 40 now, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing any coaching again. But my, you know, my, I guess, um, um, I guess th- thank you to the GA in Ireland, uh, or sorry, in, in Cracklow and Clare is, you know, there's not a day that goes by that you don't think of, of 
memories um, that you've experienced. Uh, those games I, I, I talked about from 97 to yeah. 2013, you know, built you uh, as a person, your resilience, your, your, your persistence, your, your training you do daily, or um, if you're in business, it, it's a huge help. Um, but I guess it's just the discipline, Michael. That's the one thing I got from, from, from sport was the discipline um, of turning up for the team, you know, that it wasn't about you, you know, it, it, county and club are very different. In, in county, you know, there's, it, it's, it's a much bigger organization um, and you're playing for your teammates and your family. Um, with a club, it's very much more personal, as you know, um, and, 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 and to be able to come back to Cracklow, be welcomed as I was, in 2013 and 14 and, and to win will be you know it will be the moment that I'll always cherish and anytime I walk back into into set rights or, or walk into the, the the parish church or even the shop I'll always have that in common with the villagers with my players we, we meet each other after 10 years and those memories will come flooding back so it's just a it's a key. It's a key part of my life, and it's a key part of every GA, GA player's life. When you look at someone, I look at Michael. I remember you being on the sidelines with us. I remember you being a part of, of our successes. Yeah. At Fitz, Davy Fitz, Colm Hone, and Kevin Kennedy. Anytime I meet them, memories come flooding back, and that's that's a that's a great way to have it and good memories. Yeah. I suppose from from the the one point I took from it anyway that you're you're trying to have everything you you're, so you're basically going to be summer in Kratla, autumn in Dubai, and the winter in Australia. So is it fair to say you like the sun? Have I have I ever changed, Michael? I want not I want it all. Not a bit. I I'd pass on your I'd, I'd pass on your good words to Kevin Kindy, now the minor team from ninety seven. Listen, thanks very much for that. It was a joy talking to you and. Hopefully we'll mm -hmm. see you back, but don't don't do too much coaching with Kratla. We want to keep them down a bit if we can manage it, okay? So listen, thanks very much, Claude, and we'll see we we'll talk again. Thanks, Michael. All the best.